Even a few days after its release, the new Claude 3.5 model from Anthropic is still causing a lot of excitement in the chatbot world. One feature in particular has impressed us and everyone else, the artifacts. We can write code, design things, or create documents with this experimental feature. Have you tried the artifacts, and what did you use it for? Let me know in the comments. The first numbers from the chatbot arena are now in, and even though Claude 3.5 Sonnet is just slightly behind GPT-4.0 in the overall ranking, the Anthropic model has secured first place in coding, and rightfully so. Shortly after the release, many cool examples are circulating online. We also want to show you what is now possible in this video and do some practical applications together. By the way, the artifacts are a bit hidden because you need to activate the feature in Claude separately. The feature is not automatically on even if you use Claude 3.5 Sonnet. If you click on your account in the bottom left corner and then select Feature Preview, there is a switch for artifacts that needs to be turned on. Then they are available in the chat. However, they are not unlimited as there is a limit for users who do not have a paid plan. These limits are still quite generous, which we will see soon. First, we will talk about my initial experiments and the results. Then, we will do a live session to see how quickly it works and how far we can go with a daily limit of Claude. But let's start with my first test. I wanted to test how creative Claude can be, so I started with a very vague prompt. I just said, create a new mini game for the browser. I didn't specify what kind of game I wanted, and here is the first response I got. As we can see, the code on the right-hand side is written by Claude. I have to say, I don't know anything about coding. That's what makes it so exciting. A game called Guess the Number was created. Here are the specifications and rules of the game from Claude. I've created a simple Guess the Number game for you. This game includes a clean, responsive user interface, a random number generator, 1100, input validation to ensure the guess is within the correct range, feedback on whether the guess is too high or too low, a limit of 10 attempts, game over conditions, correct guess or out of attempts. To play the game, the game will generate a random number between 1 and 100. Enter your guess in the input field. Click the Submit Guess button. Button. You'll receive feedback on whether your guess is correct, too high, or too low. You have 10 attempts to guess the correct number. The game ends when you guess correctly or run out of attempts. This HTML file contains everything needed to run the game in a web browser. You can save it as an .html file and open it directly in your browser to play. Would you like me to explain any part of the code or suggest any improvements or additional features? So let's play the game Guess the Number. I choose 7 first. Let's see. 7 is too low. As we can see, I have nine more tries. This seems to work very well. Next, I chose the number 57. 57 is too high, so it must be a number between 7 and 57. How about the number 30? 30 seems too low, so it must be between 30 and 57. Let's see if it's 44. Still too high. I think we're getting close, so it must be between 30 and 44. I choose 37. Yeah, I did it. After five tries, it could be faster, but I'm happy with the result. I think the game is great for such a simple prompt. What do you think? Feel free to write your opinion in the comments. I will make some changes. I want a high score list. And when you win, there should be fireworks on the screen. And when you lose, a sad smiley should appear. Once we have entered our prompt, we can see the programming directly on the right hand side again. Certainly. I'd be happy to enhance the game with those features. Let's add a high score list, a sad smiley for losses, and a fireworks animation for wins. I'll update our existing game with these new features. I've updated the game with the requested features. Here's a summary of the changes. High score list, sad smiley for losses, fireworks animation for wins. We see another explanation of the functions here, which I also think is very cool. And then a short summary of how this affects the game. Now we'll play the game again to try out our new features. I'm going to lose the game on purpose to see if the sad smiley appears. Ta-da, a sad smiley has appeared. The change worked. I have never been so happy about a sad smiley. All right, let's play the game again. This time, we have to win to test the other functions. I'm curious to see if fireworks appear when we win, and if we can enter our name in the high score list. We start with a guess of 25. Too low. Next, I'll try 60. Still too low. Let's go with 80. Wow, still too low. How about 90? Oh, that's still too low. Let's try 95. Now it's too high. So it's somewhere between 90 and 95. I type in 92. Still too low. Unbelievable. It must be 93. Yes, we did it. We won. Look at those fireworks, so cool. But wait, I can't enter my name in the high score list. We'll need to fix that. 
We reached out to Claude35Sonnet to fix the missing high score list. Let's see what he can do. After entering our prompt, the AI quickly acknowledges the issue and apologizes for the malfunction. How polite. Right away, the AI starts working on a fix, and it's impressive how fast it programs the solution. For someone like me, with no coding experience, this AI is a game changer. It even made a few improvements without me asking. Here, at the bottom left, we can see the different versions of the game. We're currently on the third version, and you can click through to explore the changes. Changes. I think it's a pretty cool feature. Since we've already played the game twice, I'll skip the gameplay this time and check the high score list. Hmm. Unfortunately, the high score list still isn't working. We need to make some changes. Let's teach the AI again and hope it works this time. We enter the following prompt. The high score list is still not working. Please check back and correct it. The AI made some cool changes again without me asking. Now, there's a console where the solution is displayed so we can test it faster. I don't mind that at all. As long as the high score list works, I'm happy. Let's play the game again. This time, it's quick since the solution is at the bottom of the console. Hmm, it still doesn't work. Now there's a new game button, but you still can't enter your name in the high score list. Let's tackle that again. We enter the following prompt. The high score list is not functioning correctly. It displays, but when you win, it does not allow you to enter your name as the winner. Please fix this issue. The AI recognizes the problem and apologizes every time, so it's aware the high score list isn't working properly. All right, let's give it another shot. We have our solution here in the console, so we'll enter it. Hmm, it still doesn't work. The high score list issue persists. Now, the console shows, player name entered, but I still can't enter a name. Let's try again and see if we can get it to work this time. Let's try entering a more detailed prompt into the AI and see if it helps. The high score list is still not working properly. It displays, but you can't enter your name after winning. The console shows, player name entered, which indicates it's waiting for input, but no input field appears. Please correct this. After several attempts, we've reached the sixth version of the game. I hope this time the more detailed prompt has worked, so let's play through it again. Thanks to the console, we know the answer right away and can test it quickly. We enter our answer, and ta-da! We can finally enter our name into the high score list. Of course, we enter our name, AI Insights, and play until we've claimed all five top spots. After all that effort, we've earned it. Claude35Sonnet managed to solve the issue pretty quickly and I'm still impressed by how fast and easy it was. It took us several attempts with the high score list, but in the end, a detailed prompt did the trick. The key takeaway here is that, like with all AIs, we need to be precise about where the problem lies. Overall, I'm very satisfied. What's your opinion on this? Let us know what you think in the comments. Now, let's develop another game together. This time, I have something specific in mind. I think most of us are familiar with Brick Breaker games. I've included an example from YouTube to show you what it looks like, and I've taken a screenshot from that game. We'll use this screenshot and ask Claude, hey, please create this game for me. Here's the screenshot from the YouTube video we just saw. I'll upload it as an attachment and enter the corresponding prompt. Please create a web-based game like the one in the screenshot. We'll send this off and run it in real time without any cuts to show you how quickly it works. The artifacts window opens and Claude Sonnet immediately gets to work. I can't emphasize enough how impressive this speed is. While I'm explaining what's happening, the AI is almost finished. It generates a lot of code for us at an incredible speed. And when I look over here now, I can see that my game is running. Hmm, but I can't move my paddle. Strange. I've already done the first points, which seem to work without any problems. As we can see above, the points are also displayed correctly. But why can't I move my paddle? Shit, I should look at the description again to see if I've missed something. Ah, yes. I first have to click on the game and then I can use the arrow keys to move my paddle. I think that's pretty cool. And all that from just one screenshot. I'm very impressed, but it still looks a bit static. I'm going to make a few more changes. Maybe we can add an animation for the blocks, so when you hit them, a particle effect is displayed when they are destroyed. And, of course, we'll add our famous high score list where you can enter your name after the game. I'm curious to see if the AI will get the high score list right on the first try this time. We enter the following prompt. Two improvements for the game. The first is an animation for the blocks. That when you hit the blocks, a particle effect is displayed as soon as you destroy them. And the second is a high score list where you can enter your name after the game. As usual, we can see on the right hand side that Claude is already working on it. I'm going to speed up the video so we can see the results faster. Now you can see the animation. Pretty cool.
and you can enter your name in the high score list right after the game. This time there were no problems. Maybe Claude learned from the previous game, but we can't be sure. As always, we enter our name, AI Insights, but it bothers me that I can't see the top five scores like before. Let's fix that. We'll enter this prompt. The high score list should show the top five places each time so you can see who is ahead or behind you. I'll speed up the video so we can see the results faster. Oh, we haven't seen this before. An error has appeared at the bottom right of the console. So, even AI can make mistakes. Let's try to correct it by telling the AI what's in the console. We enter this prompt. I have the following message in the console. Uncaught error. Uncaught reference error. Draw is not done. Find. Fix it. The AI sees its mistake and starts working. I'm curious to see what happens next. I'll adjust the speed here too so we can see the result right away. Okay, it looks like Claude has made another change without being told. This time, it's more of a negative change. Before, the adjustments were always small improvements to the game. Now the background color has changed to white, making it hard to see the cue ball. However, the high score list has been fixed. There's now a field at the bottom where you can enter your name. But I'm not satisfied with this. We need to correct it. We enter the prompt. Now the background is white so I can no longer see the ball. Please change the background to a dark color again so I can recognize the cue ball. I'll adjust the speed again to see the results quickly. Oh, it looks like we've made another mistake. Let's give Claude the error message from the console. After sending the console message to Claude, he immediately starts working again. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is that Claude provides explanations for why things aren't working. This gives you a transparent insight into what's happening, which I think is pretty cool. In the bottom right of the prompt command window, you can see the remaining messages. We currently have three requests left, and we can send Claude more requests starting at 7 a.m. I'll speed things up again to get the results faster. Now we can see that he's changed the background color back to dark, just like at the beginning, so we can see the cue ball again. With the sixth version of the game, we've reached our final result. We wanted an animation, and he did a great job. The high score list had a few mistakes initially, but he fixed them in the end. As always, we enter our name, AI Insights, in the list. Let's take one last look at our famous high score list to see if it shows the top five places. The list seems to be working perfectly. We can see the top spots and enter our name, just as I had imagined. Checking the prompt command window, we see that we still have two requests left. If I'm not mistaken, we can send about 11 requests to Claude every day. Of course, you can keep improving the game by adding a menu and other features. Collaborating with Claude is fun, even if we had a few difficulties with the Brick Breaker game. We admit that, of course. I'm impressed with the new artifacts function. Honestly, I'm on the verge of getting a paid account to bypass the limits. It's just too much fun to experiment and see where it takes you. I need to correct something. According to Anthropic, the message limits are load dependent. That means there's no fixed number of messages per day for free users, even though we had about 11 requests in one day. Have you experimented with Claude 3.5 and the artifacts? What's your opinion? Have you found any other cool applications? Let me know in the comments. As always, I appreciate your likes on the video. See you next time on AI Insights.